A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 20th of July 2022. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we have chosen for today's discussion. See in this discussion the first news article that we are going to discuss is very much relevant for your upcoming mains examination. Also I had made a point to discuss the other articles in both preliminary as well as mains perspective. Okay. Now without wasting much time let's get into the first news article discussion look at this opet article see recently the union ministry of health published a new draft bill to replace the drugs and cosmetics act 1940 as the drugs and cosmetic act 1940 is a pre independent era act our government has decided to replace it and this is to accommodate the changing times this article highlights the issues with the recently published draft bill so in this discussion we will first see the provisions of the drugs and cosmetics act 1940 then we will see some provisions of the new draft bill and finally we will see the issues with the draft bill that the author of this article has highlighted before getting into the discussion i have highlighted the syllabus regarding this discussion and you can go through it now let us start our discussion First let us take a look at major provisions of the Drugs and Cosmetics Act 1940 See the Drugs and Cosmetics Act 1940 was mainly enacted to regulate the import manufacture and distribution of drugs in India The act tries to or aims to ensure that the drugs and cosmetics sold in India are safe effective and conform to the state quality standards okay Here we must also know about the Drugs and Cosmetic Rules 1945. Also, the Drugs and Cosmetic Rules 1945 are the set of rules under the Drugs and Cosmetic Acts 1940. See, we might have heard a doctor say that a particular medicine is a scheduled medicine, right? This Drugs and Cosmetic Rules 1945 is the one that gives the provision for the classification of the various drugs into different schedules. In addition to this it also contains various guidelines for storage sale display and prescription of drugs of various schedules for example paracetamol is sold over the counter whereas benzodiazepine is not sold over the counter this classification is made by the drugs and cosmetic rules 1945 okay while we are here we must also know about two bodies first one is the drugs technical advisory body the drugs technical advisory body is a statutory body it is constituted under the drugs and cosmetics act 1940 the main function of this body is to provide expert advice to the central and state government on the technical matters related to drugs and cosmetics okay the second one is the central drug standard control organization see it is the National Drugs Regulatory Authority of India The Drugs and Cosmetic Act 1940 and the Drugs and Cosmetic Rules 1945 has various provisions right these provisions are implemented by the Central Drug Standard Control Organization okay see it is under the control of the Union Health Ministry and its function mainly includes regulation of import of drugs setting standards for drugs and to decide whether new drugs have adequate clinical evidence before they can be sold okay this is headed by the drug controller general of india and when you take on the state level there are state drug controllers one in each state and union territory the functions of the state drug controllers include providing license to the drug manufacturers picking up sample drugs from the market and checking their quality and finally to prosecute the drug manufacturers when the sample drugs are found to be substandard okay see this is about the drugs and cosmetics act 1940 now let us see the major provisions under the recently published new draft drug medical devices in cosmetics bill 2022 The first major provision is that this bill separately defines medical device which was not done in the Drugs and Cosmetic Act 1940. The 1940 Act no regulated medical devices as one of the four categories of drugs. In addition to this, 
the new bill creates a separate medical devices technical advisory board in the similar lines of the drugs technical advisory board okay see earlier the drugs technical advisory board advises governments in relation to both drugs and medical devices okay the new bill proposed that the medical devices technical advisory board will provide advice to the government in regards to medical devices this medical devices technical advisory board will include medical professionals and also people with technical knowledge of the devices okay see currently you know there is a network of central and state testing labs for testing drugs all over india likewise the new bill proposes setting up of a network of central and state testing labs for testing medical devices also the pharma industry in india is growing in a fast phase am i right medical devices are a major part of it in order to capture the export market proper standards have to be maintained right so this network of testing labs will help ensure global standards in the medical devices and now the last major provision in the new bill is regards to rules for online pharmacy there has been an explosion of online pharmacies like netmeds 1mg apollo 247 etc etc am i right so to regulate these the bill proposes that the central government must frame separate rules this will help provide a common regulatory framework for all online pharmacies all over india these are some of the major provisions of the recently published new draft drugs medical devices and cosmetics bill 2022 now having seen this now let us see the issues in the draft bill highlighted by the author in this editorial article see the author feels that although the bill introduces some provisions regarding medical devices and online pharmacy the bill fails to address the issues in regards to drug regulation that is there is nothing new in this bill regarding drug regulation this is why the opad article is aptly titled a new legislation that mirrors the old now let us see the first issue see presently under the drugs and cosmetics act 1940 for the regulation of the drugs what the drug inspectors do is they pick up random drugs from the market and test its efficiency if the drug is found not up to the standards the manufacturer of the drug is prosecuted this method is faulty at its core see there is a huge room for error am i right and in this method a lot relies on fate for example if a drug manufacturer makes 80 good tablets and 20 faulty tablets during the random testing the drug inspector happens to pick up one of the 80 good tablets so in the eyes of the drug inspector there is nothing with the tablet that he has picked so he will not take action against the drug manufacturers right in this case the 20 faulty tablets will still be in the market and will affect the life of the people who consume the faulty ones this is why world over countries have moved from this method of testing to the gmp method that is good manufacturing practices method in the gmp method all the drug manufacturers are made to follow good manufacturing practices so inspections by drug inspectors are done not after the drug is manufactured but while the drug is being manufactured this kind of inspection will ensure all the drugs leaving the manufacturing standards to be up to the standards right the draft bill still has not endorsed the gmp method and relies on the old method of inspection for regulation of drugs this is the first issue highlighted by the author of the editorial now moving on to the second issue as we saw while we were discussing the provisions of the drugs and cosmetics act 1940 the central drug standard control organization has a limited role compared to the state drug regulators the central drug standard control organization only deals with regulation of import of drugs setting standards and ensuring the drugs have gone through proper clinical trials it is only the state drug regulator that enforces the drug standards and prosecute the drug manufacturers when they violate these standards as there are a total of 37 state drug regulators in india one in each state and union territory there is a lot of non uniformity for example take himachal pradesh it has very lax regulatory standards in addition to this the himachal pradesh government provides tax holidays for drug manufacturers 
So a lot of medicine manufacturing in India happens in Himachal. But in case of Tamil Nadu, which has strict safety standards, finds fault with the drug, for which the manufacturing base is in Himachal Pradesh. It cannot cancel the license of the drug manufacturer because only the Himachal Pradesh government can take action against them. Due to this, even though states like Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Karnataka have higher standards, they have to deal with substandard drugs from Himachal Pradesh. To address this, in the case of countries like the US, the drug standards are common for all the states and it is enforced by a central authority. This kind of mechanism has to be introduced in India by empowering the Central Drug Standard Control Organization and expanding its role. The draft bill is silent on this issue also. This is the second fault in the draft bill highlighted by the author. And moving on to the last issue, almost all the decisions regarding drugs are decided by unelected bureaucrats and technical experts. Although the decisions of these experts are based on scientific data, to ensure accountability, transparency must be ensured. See, under the present scenario, after a decision regarding a drug is made, the data based on which the decision was arrived at can be assessed only through the Right to Information Act 2005. The data is not published to the public by default. The author feels that all clinical test data and the inspection results must be made available to the public by default. See, this will ensure accountability, right? But the bill is silent on this aspect also. So the draft bill fails to make accommodation for public participation in decision making process. So this is the third issue highlighted by the author in this article. All the issues in the draft bill highlighted here are in relation to drug regulation. This is why the author feels that the draft bill is a copy of the old law and there is nothing new in regards to drug regulation. Okay, so that's all about this news article. See, this news article is very much important for your upcoming mains examination. And also, I had made a point to relate something to the preliminary examination also. All the bodies or act can be straight away put as a preliminary type of question. Okay, so if a question comes in mains, like critically analyze the new draft drug medical devices and cosmetics bill 2022 you can absolutely use the points that we discussed today okay so with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this article it says that the former rajasthan governor filed her nomination papers for the vice presidential elections this happened yesterday and this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us learn about the election of vice president from preliminary perspective. See, the manner of election of vice president is given in the Article 66 of the Indian Constitution. As per Article 66, the vice president shall be elected by the members of an electoral college. Now, let us see who are all present in this electoral college. See, this electoral college consists of the members of both houses of the parliament. So, the electoral college consists of both the elected and nominated members of both the houses, that is both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. And the election is held in accordance with the system of proportional representation by means of the single transferable vote. One more thing to note here is that the voting at the election is done by secret ballot. While reading the election of vice president, revise the election manner of president also. There is only a minor difference in these two. See, for president election, the concerned article in the constitution is article 54. As per the article, the president shall be elected by the members of an electoral college consisting of the elected members of both the houses of parliament and the elected members of the legislative assemblies of the states. So, the electoral college consists of only the elected members from both the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha and only the elected members from the state legislative assemblies. Am I right? And here, the elected members from the union territories which have legislative assemblies will also be included. See, when compared to vice president's election, two differences are there. One is, the electoral college for president's election consists of members from the state legislatures. But it is not in the case in vice president's election. It consists of members from only the parliament. Am I right? And the second difference is that the electoral college for president election consists only the elected members from parliament and state legislatures. 
But in the case of vice president, both elected and nominated members of the parliament take part in the election. Am I right? So note the difference and learn the difference. Now coming back to vice president election. See other thing that you have to remember regarding the election of vice president is that the vice president shall not be a member of either house of the parliament or of the house of the legislature of any state. And if he is a member, then he should vacate his seat in that house on the date on which he enters his office. Now let's learn about the eligibility criteria. See the eligibility criteria includes that he or she should be a citizen of India or he or she should have completed the age of 35 years and they should be qualified for election as a member of the Council of the States and they should not hold any office of profit under the government of India or the government of any state or under any local or other authority subject to the control of any of the said governments. Okay. Finally, note that the vice president is elected for a period of five years. Now with this information, go and read about the removal and resignation process of vice president also so that you can complete this vice president topic holistically. Okay. So that's all about this news article. In this news article discussion, we saw about the election of vice president. Along with that, we saw the election of president also. That is, we saw the difference between the two elections. Okay. So with these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. See this article here. It says that, the Comptroller and Auditor General, that is CAG, asked the Telecom Department to review the spectrum pricing mechanism for captive users. See, the Department of Telecom had not yet finalized the policy for allotment and assignment of spectrum for captive users, or rather commercial services with the approval of the Digital Communications Commission. Now that the DCC or the Digital Communications Commission is the apex body for telecom policy formulation. And this is about the article given here. In this context, let us understand more about CAG, that is Comptroller and Auditor General. See, as per the Article 148 of the Indian Constitution, it is said that there shall be a Comptroller and Auditor General of India that is CAG of India. He shall be appointed by the president by warrant under his hand and seat. See, he will be removed from the office on the same grounds as a judge of the Supreme Court. See, read about the removal procedure for the judge of a Supreme Court. It will be very much useful for your preliminary examination. So from this, what we can know? We know that Indian constitution does not provide for any qualifications or eligibility criteria for CAG. But know that he holds office for a period of 6 years or up to the age of 65 years. In this whichever is early, that will be the period of service. It is given in the article that the CAG shall not be eligible for further office either under the government of India or under the government of any state after he has ceased to hold his office. Okay. It was also given in the article that the salary and other conditions of service of the CAG shall be such as may be determined by the parliament by law. And until they are determined, it shall be as specified in the second schedule. Also know that the administrative expenses of the office of the CAG, including all salaries, allowances and pensions payable to CAG or in respect of persons serving in that office, is charged upon the Consolidated Fund of India, that is CFI. See, all these provisions that we saw so far ensures the independence of CAG. Okay. Apart from this, know that the conditions of service of persons serving in the Indian Audit and Accounts Department and the administrative powers of the CAG shall be prescribed by rules made by the President. This is after the consultation of the CAG. Okay. Now let us see about the functions and powers of CAG. See, according to Article 149 of the Constitution, which deals with the duties and powers of CAG, it is said that the duties and powers of CAG in relation to the accounts of the Union and of the States is prescribed by law made by the Parliament. 
accordingly the parliament enacted the cags that is cags duties powers conditions of service act 1971 this act was amended in the year 1976 to separate accounts from audit in the central government okay see i have displayed some of the important duties and powers of cag here just go through it okay for example he or she audits the accounts related to all expenditure from the consolidated fund of india consolidated fund of each state and consolidated fund of each union territory having a legislative assembly then he also audits the accounts related to all the expenditure from the contingency fund of india and the public accounts of india as well not only this he also audits the accounts related to all the expenditure from the contingency fund of each state and the public account of each state also okay then he audits all trading manufacturing profit and loss accounts balance sheets and other subsidiary accounts kept by any department of the central government and state government see he even advises the president with regard to the prescription of the form in which the accounts of the center and the state shall be kept then he acts as a guide friend and philosopher of the public accounts committee of the parliament one important thing that you have to remember is he ascertains and certifies the net proceeds of any tax or duty which is mentioned in article 279 his certificate is final in this matter okay and one important power or function that you have to remember is the cag submits three audit reports to the president one is the audit report on the appropriation accounts other one is the audit report on finance account and the last one is the audit report on public undertakings okay so that's all about this news article see regarding the functions and power go through all the points that i have given here and i have discussed some few important points alone okay but you have to go through all the important points see these kind of static topics are very much important for your preliminary examination because straight away questions are asked from these topics okay so these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion look at this article in this article our finance minister says the rational behind the imposition of gst on unbranded prepacked and prelabeled food products we all know that recently some articles were brought under the gst regime so in this discussion we will see the list of articles for which the gst rates are altered we will also see our finance minister's argument on it okay see after the 47th gst council meet the gst rates were revised for many items the council headed by the finance minister desired on bringing packed foods like milk curd and paneer and packed ones like rice and wheat when packed in to 5% gst rate the other items that are brought under the 5% gst rate are jaggery puffed rice organic food the rest are given in the table and you can just go through it see the solar water heaters earlier attracted 5% gst but they are now brought under the 12% bracket let us take the renting of trucks and goods carriage that attracted 18% gst earlier is now reduced to 12% gst the other items brought under the 12% gst bracket are displayed here you can just go through it then take led lamps tetra packs and drawing instruments will now become costlier as they will start attracting 18% gst from now on the rest of the articles brought under the 18% bracket are displayed here you can go through it see i am providing with these articles so that you can pick whichever article brought under gst is debatable and utilize it into your mains answer writing okay this i am saying whenever the question is like critically analyze the bringing in of new items into gst regime okay then having seen this now let us see the rational behind the imposition of gst on unbranded prepacked and prelabeled food products as highlighted by our finance minister See, our finance minister said earlier when 5% GST was issued for pre-packed branded cereals, pulses, flour, there was rampant misuse by various manufacturers and brand owners. So there was a lot of tax evasion. It is only due to this and to avoid the tax leakage that GST of 5% will be imposed on unbranded, pre-packed, and pre-labeled food products. 
In addition to this, our finance minister clarified that all food items including wheat, pulses, rice, maize, curd and lassi would be exempt from GST when sold loose and when they are not prepacked. Okay. So, this is about this news article. See, I had taken this article so as to make you aware of the current scenario that is going on with this GST topic. Okay. If you want to brush up about the GST, you can just watch our Hindu news analysis dated on June 30. Okay. And that is June 30, 2022. So, these key points in mind. Now, let's move on to the next news article discussion. Now, have a look at this news article. See, this news article talks about GST compensation. We all know that GST came into effect on 1st July 2017. Initially, the states feared that implementation of GST will result in revenue losses to the states. To address this concern of the states, the union government proposed the GST compensation. The union government said it will compensate the states' loss in revenue due to implementation of GST for the next 5 years. As the states feared, they lost revenue due to the implementation of GST. So, the union government has been providing compensatory funds to the states who faced loss of revenue. This 5 year period that we are talking about has now come to an end. So, hereafter the union government will not compensate the state government for the loss of revenue. The news article says that although the GST collection has not met the expectation of both the union and the state governments, the union by imposing more tax on non-shareable revenues like union excise duty on petrol, diesel and aviation turbine fuel has compensated its loss. So, it is the states know that are now left without any help as the GST compensation period ended. Mainly if you take states like Punjab and Goa, they will face the most stress. So, that's all about this news article. So, in this news article and in the previous news article, we saw about the current situation that is running on the topic GST. Okay. So, this can be put as your main question directly. And for preparing for your preliminary examination, I had mentioned that in our June 30, 2022 article, we had brushed about this GST clearly. You can just go through it for your prelims perspective. Okay. So, regarding this GST compensation end and bringing in new items into GST regime, there might be a mains related question for you. Okay. So, utilize these points to enrich your mains answers. So, with these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion, which is the preliminary practice question discussion. Today, we have three questions in which two questions I will be discussing and one question will be a quiz question for you. Okay. Now, look at this first question. See, it is regarding the Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Two statements are given. So, whenever two statements are given, we have to go through both the statements before answering the question. Am I right? Now, let's look into the first statement. See, statement 1 is incorrect. According to Article 151, it has said that the reports of the CAG relating to the accounts of the union shall be submitted to the President who shall lay it before each house of the Parliament. And in that clause 2 says that the reports of the CAG relating to the accounts of a state, it shall be submitted to the Governor who shall lay it before the Legislature of the state. So, the statement 1, it says that the reports of the CAG relating to the accounts of the union and the states are submitted to the president is incorrect. Only that of the union is submitted to the president. Okay. Now, look at statement 2. See, statement 2 is correct. According to article 150, the accounts of the union and of the state shall be kept in such form as the president may prescribe on the advice of the CAG or the Comptroller and Auditor General of India. It is clearly mentioned in Article 150. Okay. So, this statement is correct. Now, read the full question. The question is demanding for correct statement. So, your answer here will be option B, 2 only. Now, let's move on to the second question. See, this question is regarding the Vice President. Okay. This is also a two statement question. So, I am going to go through both the statements before arriving at the answer. Okay. Now, look at statement 1. See, statement 1 is incorrect. See, as per article 68 clause 2, an election to fill vacancy in the office of the vice president occurring by the reason of his death, 
resignation or removal then the person elected to fill the vacancy shall be entitled to hold office for the full term of 5 years from the date on which he enters upon his office okay so the statement one which says that he or she who is elected to fill the vacancy can hold the office only for the remaining period of the term is incorrect now look at statement 2 see the statement 2 is also incorrect as per article 67 no a vice president may be removed from his office by a resolution of the council of states so a formal impeachment is not required for his removal the resolution should be passed by a majority of all the then members of the council and agreed to by the house of the people by a simple majority that is majority of the members present and voting so the statement too which says a vice president is removed from his or her office in the same manner as that of the president is incorrect because for president we go for impeachment okay now look at the question the question is demanding for correct statements yes the answer here will be option d neither one nor two now displayed here is the quiz question for you see this is regarding the gst as i said if you go through the basic concepts about gst you can answer this question very well it is a very easy question so try answering this question post your answers in the comment section and the right answer will be posted in the comment section itself okay so that's all for today's prelims practice question and quiz question now let's move on to the mains practice question go through the question once and try to write answer for this question see keep writing it will be very much useful for improving your writing skills for attempting the mains examination okay so that's all for today's discussion if you like this video do like share and comment and don't forget to subscribe to the shankar is academy's youtube channel thank you for listening